Hello, and welcome to my Neurodivergent Diary with me, Kitty Cowell. In this podcast series, I'll be interviewing both neurotypical and neurodivergent people about all kinds of subjects, from dating to fashion to music and more, to see how we relate or don't relate in our experiences and thinking. So on today's podcast, I have got my lovely friend, Sophie Kay. Hello. Hello. She is a award-winning podcaster, not to put me under any <laughs> pressure right now, <laughs> a presenter, yeah. an interviewer. Um, I don't know. You have many strings under your belt. Mm. I'd say your main thing is presenting and podcasting now, really. Yeah. 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 How, okay. So to start with, obviously, I've just mentioned that this is my neurodivergent diary. I am dyslexic and I have known that I've been dyslexic since I was six years old, which is very lucky. I know um, I am potentially some other things that is being worked out right now. You have just found out that you are neurodivergent. Welcome to the gang. Yay. <laughs> How has that like been? Because you're an adult finding out now, like how has that process been, I suppose, to begin with? Um, I'd say in many ways it's been quite a relief because I think you you know your whole life that there's something up, you just don't have a label for it. And so sometimes there can be the assumption that, oh, I'm just weird. I'm not the same as other people. There's something wrong with me specifically. And I feel like getting the label helped me realise that there is a wealth of people out there and there's something about collating all of my little weird symptoms together that's made me feel more whole. Um, but then I, I, went, I won't lie, I went through a phase of anger. I was really annoyed for a while because I was like, well, I'm angry because I should have known this before. Why, is, why were schools not testing for this? Mm. Why, why was... <clears throat> Every workplace I've worked in. So this isn't something of the past. Oh, schools when I was growing up. This is workplaces today. They don't yeah. cater for it. They don't understand about it. And you have to be your own champion, which makes me really angry because I think <clears throat> there's probably a lot of people like me and like you who d who might not know yet. Yeah. And so I think if it was actually broken down, I bet it's not this like weird. Yeah, yeah. Like we're anything. not the weirdos, the, the normies are the weirdos. Yeah, exactly. I think there's like this outpouring of people finding out at the moment, which, you know, in some ways there's a bit of a backlash to that with people going, oh, what, just because you've got this, that and the other doesn't mean that you're, you know, autistic or doesn't mean that you're ADHD, etc. And actually, maybe it does mean that they are. But I think that we're, we've been seen as being so rare, you know, like for me, mm. finding out at six is such a big deal in comparison to, you know, you finding out now as an adult, right? And I still don't think that I was diagnosed properly. Like gifted mm. dyslexic was like this, you know, sort of different label anyway that I had, which was interesting and complicated and helpful. But I think we're finding out now that especially in women, being ADHD, ADD, autistic just seems to be completely like undiagnosed, right? Mm. They didn't seem to really focus on women like... Being ADHD, there, there was this focus on the H being like the, you know, hyperactive, like boys, basically. And I just remember it was always boys that were diagnosed ADHD when I was a kid in school. And it was never considered unless a girl was like really, you know, like flying off the walls that maybe she could be. And we now know that that's not the only way to diagnose ADHD. And obviously ADD exists, which is similar but different. And it's, I think, for you especially, right? And I know it because I know the anger. Like, I'm frustrated now. I'm still trying to figure some stuff out. But for you, it's like you're already a woman. Mm. <laughs> you're already, you know, a black woman. Mm. And now you're, in, well, you've always been, but now you know that you're a neurotypical black woman. You're diverse. Like, neuro, sorry. <laughs> I'm a dyslexic. Like, I'm neurotypical. I wish I was. Yeah, like, sorry. Well, Neurodivers. Thank you. <clears throat> but like, my point is, life was already fucking hard for you. I mean, mm. life was hard for you. You didn't have a label for it, right? Um, and you've you've had so many struggles, as you know, many of us have in different ways of our life. But in your career specifically, it's like we're friends, right? So I know these things. So just to explain to people listening, Sophie has been in the rock industry for mm. many years, right? You have been. Um, a presenter, a, an, an interviewer within like that space, interviewing the biggest metal and rock bands that you can like mm. imagine. And they, 
you know, people ask for you. People ask for Sophie to be like, when they've got an album coming out, if they want to be interviewed, there's a lot of big rock bands that you've made such good connections with. And they want to be interviewed by you if they're mm. going to be specifically, you know, come to the UK to do that. And I think that that is because you are neurodivergent and you are Sophie K who's different. I think that's helped you. But that also is a hindrance and it must be hard to see the positive in it when it's been also so tough to get to like where you are now. How does yeah. that feel? It's... um. It's interesting because, like you say, I have my neurodivergence to thank because if I, <clears throat> I... At the moment, I'm still trying to figure out, like, what's ADHD, what's um, ASD, yeah. and what comes from childhood trauma, yeah. CPTSD. So I've got all these letters that are just like, <laughs> oh, my God. Um, we should start getting them tattooed, should oh, we? Oh, my gosh. I'd just be, like, alphabet. But anyway, <laughs> I think the thing is, is looking at... The, I wouldn't have made it in my career. Everyone looks at me and they go, oh, you're so lucky, you made it, blah, 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 blah. I n was never lucky. Yeah, you were never <laughs> I lucky. never had a lucky break. I've, yeah. I, I, what I had was obsession, yeah. which comes from um, my ADHD, but also my autistic side as well, because I have just one track mind. Music is what I am now obsessed with. I used to buy magazines. I used to... Um, I used to put little tabs on them for different bands so that which bands were in there so that I could learn because obviously this is before the, everything was on the internet. Mm. Um, this is like in the MySpace days. So I'd, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd make these folders to research to become the best person possible because I knew that I didn't have all the heritage when I was in my early 20s that other people had. Um, yeah. <clears throat> And so it got me to where I am. It helped me be the best. It helped me not give up when I kept having the door slammed in my face because I was like, well, there's no other option. Yeah. However, it did hold me back in the sense that most people get into my career because they want to be famous, I've now learned. This is, this is something I'm yeah. realising. People want to be famous and they want to work alongside bands. Whereas I just really am interested in bands. <laughs> I want to help progress bands and want to find out more about them. And so whilst everybody else is running on this kind of like high self-confidence or often at times narcissistic yeah. energy, um, it, meant, it means that when it comes to things like networking, I, pff, yes, suck. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. When it comes to making friends within the scene, yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing because I have my few friends <laughs> and I'm just focused on yeah. music. And I think, um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a bit of both. And we didn't actually say, so let me just kind of bring the audience in. So you were recently diagnosed. Do you want to just tell everybody exactly what you were diagnosed with? Um, so I've got ADHD and autism. And did you think you knew that going in? Like when you went to try and get tested, were you like, I think I may be autistic or were you more like I'm ADHD and then the autism came as a surprise? So they don't actually, the test I went for, they just check for one. Like right. they just check for one <clears throat> at a time. Yeah. Um, but what happened is as I was researching um, ADHD more and more, this autism thing kept coming up. And it was weird. It was just the stars aligned to give me the information because I was looking. I've always had this issue with therapists who have been quite mean about my dad. Mm. And they've often said, well, this was a narcissistic quality of his and he blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, that's not who my dad is. Mm. And so interestingly, I started looking into because my boyfriend said, you've always loved spectrumy men. <laughs> you always get on well with spectrum -y men because I introduced him to some of my friends. And I was like, what do you mean spectrum -y? Does Mike not think he's spectrum -y or So no, he's very neurotypical. But, okay, so right, he, right. he was like, you're, you just have so many, you just get on with spectrum -y men. I was like, <laughs> what? So I started looking into what he meant by that. Yes, that's and so interesting, it. isn't it? To have his perspective. Yes. So he's been a big part of this whole journey. Right. And yeah, so then I was able to go, hang on, I think my dad's on the spectrum. And then I happened to be talking to a friend and I was talking to my dad being on the spectrum and they were like well you know I'm on the spectrum and then I said and I'm ashamed to admit this mm. I said the thing that everybody says and it's because we learn about what autism is from Rain Man yeah and I said but you can't be autistic you're so empathetic yeah <laughs> and they then said to me no you've you've got autism wrong I am I, autistic people can be more empathetic than 
I think empathetic is the wrong word, more compassionate mm, yeah. than neurotypicals. And it's because you end up taking on everyone's emotions. It's just you don't know how to express it. So I did loads yeah. of research into it because I was like, God, my friend's autistic. I need to support them. Yeah. Did research into it. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's me. me. <laughs> That's me. And then everything just kind of all of the little symptoms that I have that I was unable to change through intense work with uh, complex PTSD, there were these symptoms that just wouldn't go. Yeah. And they can often mirror each other, right? The two, like com- childhood trauma and autism. Yes, yeah. But in healing one, there were certain things that just wouldn't go. And then realizing it was autism and being able to look after those traits has made the world of difference. It's so complex and complicated yeah. because most of us have mm. had interesting lives. Yeah. And like you say, the CPS, C, CPSD, PTSD, PTSD, but you said earlier, C, CPTSD is C-PTSD, like complex, complex PTSD. that's it, right, yeah, um, is linked with being very, very um, similar, like you say, to mm. autistic or uh, neurodivergent traits. Yeah. And it's really, it's really interesting now, like I was saying earlier, this influx of people being so intrigued as to whether they might be ADHD or autistic, for example, they seem to be like the two that people are most focused on right now. And I think a lot of us are fucked up. <laughs> mm. So trying to get the correct diagnosis, because I have seen a few people, you know, on TikTok, obviously, yeah. everything I see is on TikTok now, um, saying, I thought I had ADHD. It turns out I just have PTSD. And it's fascinating, frankly. Mm. And I think, to be honest, if it pushes people to get either diagnosis, then it's great. Mm. And we do have TikTok to thank for that, don't we? This influx of short form media that's easy. But then I have this worry as well that we're all being forced to be so short term focused because of content like that, right? And Mm. now every platform is like that. And as a potential, I mean, I've basically been told I'm ADHD or ADD. I just need to get a full diagnosis. But my attention span, even as a dyslexic person, has always been a part of my problem. So we're just making ourselves worse. You know, like we're feeding ourselves this short form information, Mm. which is great. But are we also (laughs) completely ruining or I guess kind of making it harder for us to to learn how to focus through that short short form media? I don't know. Do you think it's easier? Do you think I can watch a short form video that I'm 100 percent not interested in and yeah. dismiss it within three seconds? Yeah. And you can sit me down for a, a film, and I'm not very good with films, mind. Yeah. You can sit me down for a film and I'll be hooked from the start. And I think it's just about speaking to our brains in the way they I think this is something, maybe this is my my being arrogant, I don't know, but I think it's not that I cannot concentrate on content Mm. I think it's just that I make a really quick decision on whether I like it or not and I think that's why people with ADHD do particularly well in like boardrooms Mm. because you can have a CEO a lot of CEOs have ADHD my um, psychiatrist told me Mm. and he said it's because you have someone there who has to make spontaneous decisions and you go into a neurotypical and you throw these like life-changing millions yeah. of dollars or pounds decisions they're like uh, uh, uh. Yeah. whereas an ADHD person can just flick through the files and go I'm going to make this decision yeah, and it's yeah. normally a really well thought through decision mm. but they've just done it so quickly yeah because our brains just do that yeah yeah and so I don't know if I think We come with so many amazing skills. I heard a great little line in Odd Girl Out, which is an amazing book if you're interested in autism. Mm -hmm. Um, And and then I ADHD'd out and forgot what my point was. (laughs) Not even kidding. Um, I got got bored halfway through my sentence and moved on. (laughs) Um, Okay, wait, wait. I'm just going to say, the the point of it was that I was asking about short form um, content and whether you think it it is good or bad for us, basically. If it makes us worse, which has been my sort of worry recently Mm. or if it's actually good and it actually feeds us um so yeah that makes sense but also because you just did that that kind of (laughs) little jig that your brain just did brings me to ask you another question how do you think it has affected your relationships and I mean Mm. that from everything because you just said earlier about making friends right right down to dating because you just did I I went on a date this weekend Sophie I love this podcast because everyone's just going to hear me catch up with my mates as well through it um and yeah it was hilarious that like we but he was he was like 
intense in a good way. Like we had really long conversations and I did that quite a lot because I was like, yeah. was not expecting these questions to be thrown at me from someone. But you know that can really offend neuro- neurotypicals. In what, when you, yes, because exactly. Because they think you're in a huff yeah. and you're like, oh, I just don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. And it's like, no, I've just genuinely forgotten. Yeah. And and I know and neurotypicals forget sometimes as well, but it's, yeah. it's, how do you forget when you're in the middle of a sentence? I, do you know why? Because our brains, like, I've always known just from dyslexia, right? Mm. And my, like, to kind of explain to people, I was diagnosed super young, like I said earlier. My mum was a fashion designer. Both my parents mm. were in the fashion industry. And my mum was ill. She couldn't work for a while. And then decided she was so fascinated with dyslexia because of me. <laughs> it had been so hard to, like, educate me that she became a dyslexia specialist, right? So wow, heard- so she was so fascinated with what <laughs> you were going through. She made it her specialist subject, but she's not been diagnosed yet. Oh, mum hasn't been diagnosed yet. <laughs> my dad, sorry, my dad is, it was dyslexic, right? Well, yeah. I knew that, so I guess that helped. But I'm always saying to my mum, like, I feel like you're a little bit, because the thing of, you know, when you cut people off mid-sentence? Yeah. That has just been an argument my entire life. Yeah. And me, being a person that knows I do it, would observe my parents constantly do it and just be yeah. like, please stop. Like, please let me get, well, like, we just shout over each other. Mm. Just help. Anyway, yes, that is a an interesting... <laughs> conversation I think most of my family have some kind of on my mum's side neurodivergent stuff going on on my dad's side I'm not entirely sure I feel like Mm. you know my dad was definitely dyslexic and that's interesting anyway the point I'm making is um is what oh yeah my mum became a dyslexia specialist so I learned a lot like obviously I was also lucky your point was actually that you went on a date with a guy (laughs) That. Yeah, this is what I was going to say, though, right? My mum taught me so much about our brains, yeah, is what yeah. I'm, what I'm okay, trying to say. Okay. So, like, my, I know when I'm on, I tried to advocate for myself, which is what you were talking yeah. about earlier. You have to, like, constantly advocate for yourself. And he was kind of saying from the beginning, like, that he thinks maybe he's dyslexic anyway, mm. right? So we're talking about that. So, you know, I'm not, he's creative. So I'm like, you're probably neurodivergent. Anyway, um, so I was like, okay, at least he kind of gets me. We talked about things and I'm like, oh my God, there's a reason you do all of these things. Like your brain is not neurotypical. Um, maybe that's something you need to figure out. But these are things I do to help myself. And so when I was doing that thing of having a conversation and I'm like, what was the point I was making anymore? It was... So you kept it, forgetting things. Yeah, because I'd go off on a tangent to talk about something else. And yeah, to bring it back to what I'm saying about my mum, she always kind of taught me and also so did other psychologists that like, you know, assessed me. I had so many assessments. The, the reason I'm different, the reason I'm dyslexic is because the channels in my brain are different and that's mm. what makes us neurotypical. So that thing that you said earlier about like being in a boardroom... Oh my God, why do I keep doing this? Neurodivergent. Yeah. Thank you. It's only the title of your podcast, don't worry. Yeah, I know. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with it? <laughs> The reason we're neurodivergent. Oh my God. This is such a thing that I'm like struggling with at the moment is brain fog. Right. Such a bit. It's, I have long COVID, dyslexia, potential yeah. ADHD. It's, it's, I'm fucked basically. Um, yeah. So the, the reason it happens is because the channels, like our brains are like, Everyone's brains are, you know, Mm. mostly the same. But the channels in a neurodivergent person are longer usually or just more complicated than a neurotypical. They're different. It doesn't just go from A to B. It kind of goes from A to C to Z to D back to A. Do you know Mm. what I mean? And But that also means that we see it in a different way. Mm. It's why it's now on LinkedIn a skill to add dyslexia because they talk about how we visualize in like a 3D way Mm. because of those, you know, the way that you're saying that we, I think we have such a quick but but like in-depth thought because our brain is doing that rather than doing that. Mm. Makes sense when you when you know the science behind it, I suppose. But yes, yeah, it's, it's so hard because when those things happen, you feel stupid, don't you? Oh my gosh, all the time. So All stupid. the time. I'm so lucky to have um, found a relationship where that neurodivergence is supported. Yes. Um, and my boyfriend finds it hilarious <laughs> and, and just finds it funny and is able to make fun of me. And I'm able, because of the way I am, I find it funny. Mm. It is funny that I never put lids back on things. It is funny (laughs) that I like put them half on because I couldn't focus enough to screw it on tightly. Like it's that simple. And that can drive someone mad. It's it's hilarious that I can lose contact. I get really stressed if plans change or anything like that. And I won't lie and say it hasn't caused us arguments. Yeah. But there are people who find those qualities quite endearing. And so I'm very lucky. Yes, definitely. As people understand more... 
it's nice to know that he's one of those people. Maybe we should con- reconvene this conversation because <laughs> we were going to talk about relationships. Yeah, and I've yeah. lost a lot of friendships through this, yes. not knowing what it is, um, and people thinking I'm lazy, people thinking I'm cold, all of yeah. those things. Yeah. Um, and it's like, no, I'm not cold. I think I'd, I have more emotions than you, just better at being analytical with them. Yeah, yeah. Very so, yeah. practical way of looking at life, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much. And we will reconvene and chat about this. But thank you so much for being on the podcast, Sophie. It's been thank great you, chatting Kitty. to you. And thank you for doing this, because I think a lot of people will really identify with it. I hope so. Thanks, Miss uh, Celebrity Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pressure. I'm going to listen back to this judge. <laughs> Peace out. Thank you for listening and watching my podcast today. If you would like to tell me who you think should be on the next podcast, find out more information about upcoming podcasts or have any other questions for me, you can find me on Twitter, TikTok and Instagram at Kitty Cowell. Thank you and peace out.